Hi everyone, since generative AI can now craft persuasive text and media in near real time, the dangers of deception, impersonation, and disinformation have increased dramatically. How do we protect the truth from being drowned out by illusion? One potential solution, recently proposed by a group of tech giants, involves watermarking every piece of AI-generated content. How well will this actually work? Keep watching to learn more. This video has three sections. The Gentleman's Agreement, How to Watermark, and Issues with Watermarking. Part 1. The Gentleman's Agreement. A large number of AI companies have all gotten together and made some promises to the White House that they will voluntarily start to do something about potential misuses of AI. The companies include OpenAI, Anthropic, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, etc. Specifically, the commitment is that each of these companies will voluntarily start watermarking each piece of content that one of their AIs produces. So what does this mean exactly? Well, the term watermark comes from, for example, a website that sells images. They'll have the image there, but there will be like the company's logo embossed into the image so that you can't really use the image for your own purposes. And that embossing or logo or otherwise slight disfigurement of the image is called a watermark. There are a lot of kinds of watermarks. Not all of them are immediately obvious and annoyingly visible. For example, you can have metadata that includes a watermark that says this image was created by Photoshop or something like that. So under this scheme, every image, for example, that's generated by an AI model would have some kind of watermark, probably an invisible watermark, some kind of technical watermark that's embedded in metadata, for example. And the watermark will say, this is the company that produced this image, or this is the product that produced this image. The idea is that the watermark will allow a human to look at the image and determine if it's actually real or not. For example, there was an image of an explosion happening outside the White House, which was fake, of course, auto-generated by AI, but it went viral on Twitter and it actually caused a dip in the stock market because people got worried. That's the kind of thing that people are trying to prevent with this agreement with the White House. It's worth noting that this is just a verbal agreement, as far as I can tell, between the companies and the White House. It's not binding, it's voluntary, and it might not go far enough, even if the companies actually do abide by what they say they will do. Big tech companies don't have a good track record of doing something that's in the public interest when there's a lot of money at stake. Look at Meta and their approach to privacy, for example, even after repeated hearings with the Senate and so on. The good thing, though, is this type of agreement can be put into place very quickly, which is not generally how the legal system works. And there does seem to be more recognition of the incredible pace that technology is advancing at. For example, this is a quote from Biden. We'll see more technology change in the next 10 years or even in the next few years than we've seen in the last 50 years. That has been an astounding revelation to me, frankly. Perhaps not a revelation to me or to the viewers of my channel, but it's good to see more societal recognition of the exponential curve we're on. There are still people saying we need much stricter laws in place, not just voluntary agreements. The EU has passed some legislation about AI, which I'll go into in another video. And according to Joshua Benio, who's at Université du Montréal, or the University of Montreal, we really need stricter regulations within six months. We don't have a lot of time to put this type of thing into place. He's considered one of the three godfathers of AI. They were all working together in Montreal, and they basically invented deep learning. And in case you're keeping track, two of those godfathers, Joshua Benio and Jeffrey Hinton, both think that we really need more laws in place. We're really at risk from the exponential development of AI. So while this agreement by the tech companies with the White House may not really do enough, it's still a step in the right direction. Part two, how to watermark. It's an open question how you would actually watermark all AI content and keep it separated from human-generated content. The biggest problems, of course, are that every AI model has to abide by this scheme, first of all. The watermarks have to be difficult to tamper with or difficult to remove. And finally, the watermarked content has to actually be understandable to the public at large. I'll go through three main ways that you could actually implement watermarks. The first is just to have a giant list somewhere of all the AI-generated content that has ever existed. You could think of this as basically containing a list of hashes like MD5 sums or SHA-256 sums of all the files that were actually auto-generated by AI. Anytime a model produces something, it would have to compute that sum and send it to the giant public list. When you have an image, you can basically look at the list to see if it was actually generated by AI or not. If this sounds cumbersome and complicated, that's because it is. It's a little bit like the DRM schemes that companies are trying to use right now to enforce copyright. If you want a refresher on copyright and DRM, you can check out this video I made previously on the topic. I won't dive into it here, especially because it's a dry topic. But anyway, this list would be difficult to maintain due to the sheer amount of stuff that just gets generated all the time. And it wouldn't do anything for images that are subsequently modified. If you really just used the sum, the checksum of the images, then anyone just changing a handful of pixels would generate a new image that was not AI generated. This is actually a big problem for most watermarking schemes. How do you indicate that the content was a collaboration between AI and human? 
Technically speaking, you have to watermark the image at creation time, but then you have to make sure that watermark isn't removed. If it's a visual watermark, you have to make sure the image isn't scaled to disrupt it. If it's a metadata watermark, you have to make sure that every tool that transforms that image respects the metadata and doesn't strip it out. It might be the case that AI was only partially involved early on in the planning stage. For example, if I used ChatGPT to create the bare bones outline for this video, but then I wrote all the sentences and so on myself, does that need to have a watermark? How would you actually embed that watermark? It's, it's almost impossible. There are some schemes based on semantic similarity that can actually tell when an image is almost the same as an original, but just slightly modified. That's why services like YouTube can detect DRM violations even if you like resize the image and put some stuff around the border, for example. But this doesn't solve the problem that technically speaking, it might be difficult to include the watermark everywhere. You might have to also lean on some legal scaffolding to make it happen. So second, instead of maintaining a giant public list of all the AI generated content ever, you could also tag the content with metadata. It's difficult to see how you would include metadata in text, so let's put that aside for the moment. But if you have images or videos, um, metadata is already included in those file formats. So it would be pretty straightforward. You would basically get every AI model that produces an output to add some metadata as a tag that says, I generated this, and then to cryptographically sign it. This ensures that someone can't claim that a real image was actually created by Midjourney, for example. And the nature of cryptographic signatures ensures that the signature will not be completely applicable if you change the image, or rather, you'll be able, or rather the viewer will be able to detect that you've actually changed the image so it wasn't wholly AI generated. For a parallel example, think about the metadata that's used to tag the GPS location of images. So most phones, when you take a picture with them, will automatically include some metadata in the image file that indicates the GPS latitude and longitude. And many people forget about this, which is why sometimes people accidentally expose themselves by posting an image that contains their exact GPS location. But it's actually very common for services to strip out the GPS metadata entirely. For example, if you upload to Facebook or Google Images, this will often happen. This is the problem with using metadata. By design, metadata is optional. It's not necessary for the file format, so it's possible to strip it out and you still have a valid image file. So you might have to layer on different technical means to make it more difficult to strip out metadata, or you might have to change the file format to have like an AI JPEG, for example, where the metadata or rather the signature is a required part of the file format. The third technique tries to avoid this issue with metadata that can be stripped out by instead generating different type of content. Let's return to text for a minute. If ChatGPT generates some text and then I copy paste it somewhere, it's very hard to tell that it was actually AI generated. Actually, even AI can't tell. I previously made a short about how OpenAI had a classifier that would try to tell the difference between human-generated and AI-generated text, which was only 26% accurate. And OpenAI has actually just taken it down as of a couple of days ago because it was basically not usefully correct. However, what if you used a different alphabet for AI-generated content? So this idea comes from Wired, and I'll leave a link to that article down below. You might have heard of Unicode, which is how we encode characters on a computer from different languages. So Chinese characters, Japanese characters, Arabic characters, etc. they are all represented in Unicode. The normal character set, or ASCII, basically only has English characters in it. But you could enforce that AI-generated text uses Unicode, and you could create a duplicate of every character that basically is the AI version of that character. So if a model gives you text and you copy-paste it, you're actually copying different characters that can be distinguished from human written ones. Or equivalently, in your character encoding, there could be a bit, a zero or one, that says human or AI. But the idea of Unicode is that tons of devices already support it. So if you could leverage Unicode, that would actually make this feasible. Personally, I think this problem is similar to the one where you're trying to separate code and data in an operating system for security. It's nearly impossible in the long run. And you basically have to just use metadata that indicates both the human and the AI generated content all the time everywhere. You could think of it as implementing taint tracking, for example so that no matter where data is copied to, it is tainted along the way with a bit of metadata or a tag that says this was AI generated or this was human generated. It's really inefficient and it would be a nightmare to implement. You'd probably need some special hardware features in CPUs to start making this more feasible. Another approach, of course, is to get humans to start signing every single piece of content that they generate. And you could maybe do the same for AIs and then anything that's not signed, you don't really know the provenance of. But in serious communications, you would always either receive a human signed piece of work or an AI signed piece of work. It's actually already starting to happen. Cameras from Nikon and Leica are already incorporating digital signatures. So they're not just including metadata about the GPS, they're including a digital signature whenever you take a picture so that you can prove that that picture was taken of the real world and it wasn't AI generated. Part three, issues with watermarking. As you've probably already deduced, watermarking is a very difficult technical problem. Either you have to maintain a giant list or you have to figure out how to embed metadata or watermarks that are difficult to remove 
or maybe you're redefining how data works in applications, creating two classes of data everywhere. Additionally, whatever method is chosen has to be implemented in every device out there, from taking pictures, to generating AI images, to generating text, to looking at images in apps on your Android device, to browsing the web on your desktop computer. All of these systems would need to become watermark aware, and humans would have to be trained as well. Here's a website you can go to and submit an image to tell whether it's human generated or not. This is what an image looks like in the app when it's actually AI generated. You know, maybe there's like a border or, or a real visual watermark being displayed so that you can tell AI generated content. The problem is psychologically, if you see a video or an image, even if you know it's fake, it still impacts your thinking. So when Biden was talking about potentially requiring all political ads to disclose if they'd actually used AI, it doesn't even necessarily matter. Even if you have a giant watermark that says this video is fake and it shows some politician doing something stupid, your brain might form an association between that politician and that action, even though you know the source is fake. You can start to see why you might need non-technical solutions. For example, the law getting involved. Jeffrey Hinton actually had a great idea about treating this a little bit like we do counterfeiting money. It's a very serious crime to counterfeit money. It's totally fine to create fake monopoly money as long as you don't try to pass it off as real money. So the equivalent here would be making it a crime to remove the metadata that an AI generation system automatically puts in the AI generated content. So instead of making it technically impossible to remove the watermark, which as I said, is extremely difficult, you just lean on the legal system instead. And I think we'll need to do something like that in the long run. But again, this requires the legal system, which moves more slowly. So it's very difficult to get something written into law on short notice. Nevertheless, however we're approaching this problem, whether it's through technical means, whether it's through voluntary cooperation from large tech companies, or whether it's through legal measures that outlaw the removal of AI watermarks, all of these are extremely important because this problem is extremely important. We're on the verge of no one knowing whether something they see online or hear online is real anymore. I saw that someone made an AI movie trailer in a few hours just on their own, and it's extremely high quality, which means that scammers and people trying to steal identity and other criminals are gonna find it extremely easy to generate fake content that will trick you. If we don't start thinking about how to solve this problem, we'll end up in a future where the only thing that's trustworthy is literally signed by a human that you trust. Everything else is just white noise and garbage. And we really don't wanna go there if we can help it. In the video, The AI Dilemma, the speakers describe, we lost the battle with our first contact with AI, that is to say, recommendation AI, because social media companies were not regulated. Regulation attempts were ongoing, but they just kept getting delayed and kept getting delayed. And that meant that social media companies were free to just train models to figure out exactly what captures people's attention and how their brains work and to feed them information that would make them more and more radicalized more and more outraged because from the platform's perspective, that was the best way to get people to spend the most time possible on the social media platform. So in their words, we lost that first battle and we're just starting the second battle, the one with generative AI. And if we delay legislation or we delay serious action on this the way we did in the past, we'll end up in similar circumstances, probably a lot worse because the power of generative AI is a lot greater. Finally, in conclusion, the problem is that AI is now just too good. There was a study in June that said humans can't tell the difference between human written tweets and chat GPT written tweets. AI can't even tell if text is written by humans or AI, which means we could easily get overwhelmed by fake content everywhere, a deluge of it. There are some technical measures that could be taken in the form of watermarks and tech giants have voluntarily said that they will start working on this. And there are also legal measures that could be taken. We could make it illegal for people to circumvent watermarks or illegal to create really large AI models in secret or illegal to put tons of resources towards producing a model without also putting tons of resources towards making sure it's safe. And of course, all of this has to be considered across all the countries in the world because every country has different laws, but in the long run, disinformation is a problem for everybody. So I hope that some collaboration will emerge. If you found this video interesting, please check out this previous one I made about about whether AGI or human level AI is already among us. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.